FPV Black wants to know, when I use d like on the O3, it comes out with a lot of noise and is grainy. How can I fix this? Yeah. Um, it, what you're, what I'm guessing you're trying to do is you're using the Cinelike profile and then you're trying to lift the shadows. But the problem is that Cinelike, you don't, are you using 10-bit FPV Black? Does the O3 have 10-bit? Bonesy, the O3 has 10-bit, right? Ask the wrong guy, sir. Yeah, sorry, man. I just I just jump to you whenever I have a question. Uh, DJI O3. So, are you using 10 bit FPV Black? If you're if you're yes, you're using 10 bit. Damn. Okay. Well, that's a tough one. Um, I I have to guess that you're asking too much from the camera and it just can't deliver it. Like, are you locking the ISO? Are you locking the ISO at like 100 or 200? If you're definitely using 10-bit and you're using Cinelog, the one possibility is that your ISO is too high and that's making your video noisy. But the other possibility is that you're just asking too much of the camera. The O3 does not have spectacular low light sensitivity. And so no matter what you do with 10-bit and so on, that's going to give you increased dynamic range, but ultimately the sensitivity is what it is. And you can't add, you can't get more from the sensor than it's capable of giving you. So you might just need more light. That's the that's what I would say. Uh, Gecko FPV, thank you for a two, $2 super chat. I'm not getting very good range on my DJI O3. Why? Gecko, the number one thing you want to be sure of is that it is connected to the flight controller and it is like going out of low power mode. So if you have a working OSD, then you should be good to go. But if you don't have a working on-screen display and you haven't connected it to the flight controller correctly, then it could be staying in low power mode and that's going to reduce your range. The other thing I would say is Definitely do the FCC hack on your goggles. Well, what if you live in Europe and the FCC hack is not legal? I, I then, then what I would say is everybody else is just breaking the rules and doing it anyway. And I'm not advising you to do that because it would be irresponsible to advise someone to break the rules. But... I would, it's like, I would acknowledge that everyone else is breaking the rules and I don't see a lot of people getting in trouble for it. So you can decide what you're going to do. Is there any reason to get HD0 over Walksnail Avatar for just whoops? Thank you for five pounds. Um, it's a tough one. Is HD, HD0 is lighter than Avatar by a little bit. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. The Waxnail Avatar Whoop VTX isn't terrible. It's a little heavier. There's definitely more choice in bind and flies with HD Zero. If you like, if you and a lot of people buying Whoops buy bind and flies. They don't build their own. Some of them do. The other thing to keep in mind is that the the real benefit of Waxnail over HD Zero is range and penetration. But on tiny whoops, many people don't. Most many people are going to be running at 25 milliwatts, and they're going to be racing, so they're not trying to get exceptional range of penetration in the first place. So the biggest weakness of HD zero, which is lack of range of penetration, actually kind of doesn't apply for a lot of people flying whoops, and HD zero is going to have much better latency. I think I would choose HD zero with for whoops. Because a lot of people flying whoops are racing, and HD0 is hands down better for racing. 